thanks for having us. So, this presentation is on behalf of myself and Professor Lily Sai, who unfortunately had to leave for a flight to Liberia, um, but wishes she could be here. So, I'm going to talk a little bit about our research with Mzlendo and my society. Um, but first, I want to situate this in where we're coming from as academic researchers. So, I'm a third year PhD student at MIT in the political science department. Um, and what Lily has started about a year ago is something called MIT Gut Lab, um, which is a group of political science researchers um, trying to bridge the gap between citizens and government. So we've talked a little bit earlier today about the role of academic research. Um, so I'm hoping to debunk some myths. Um, so basically what we're trying to do is see how new methods and programs and technologies can make governments more accountable to their citizens. So we're coming at this from both ends of the spectrum, the citizen side and the government side. So what MIT GovLab tries to do is to work closely with practitioners and partner organizations and funders on an iterated <laughs> experimentation approach. So we're not going in for year-long academic research agendas that we are bringing to the table. Um, instead, we're working on relatively short and small-scale experiments that use rigorous social science techniques that build on the findings from previous rounds. Um, and our goal is to test which operational and design choices are the most effective in particular contexts. Um, so what we're really trying to do is show that impact research doesn't have to take a long time. Um, and it doesn't really have to be stuck in the ivory tower. Instead, it can be really <coughs> practitionally useful for funders um, and practitioners in the field. So we're coming at this collaboration in terms of how it fits into our, our larger research agenda at GovLab around questions of civic technology. So specifically, we're interested in learning under what conditions do new and lower cost ICT channels for citizen feedback and monitoring lead to increased participation. And secondly, we're looking at how useful do governments find this feedback provided through ICT channels compared to feedback through traditional channels. And then finally, when do ICT channels for citizen input lead to more government responsiveness and better service provision? And can they facilitate cooperation between citizens and government? So our research with Mzlendo is followed, falls under this first question. And so we were connected to my society and Mzlendo through the OMIDR network to investigate this common question of interest. So specifically with our collaboration with Zalendo, we wanted to answer three questions. The first is what presentations, or what we call in the literature, framings of political news and information are most likely to stimulate online citizen engagement in Kenya. And then secondly, what types of actions are Kenyan citizens most likely to take online? And finally, does online social media alter the existing patterns of political engagement in Kenya? So again, as academic researchers, we're bringing to the table some political science theories of political behavior and participation, but also drawing on questions that Ms. Lendo really wants to know and my society wants to answer, and seeing how we can fit these all together. So to do that, um, we created a randomized controlled experiment using Facebook advertising. So we used Facebook advertisements to recruit a sample of online citizens in Kenya who use Facebook. Um, so the ad looked like this. And once someone clicked on the ad, they were randomly assigned to one of these six treatment pages. So again, I mentioned framing. So we were interested in looking at how different framings of the same information would potentially differentially affect engagement and mobilization and sort of desirability to take any sort of action. So here we're looking at an opportunity framing, which said something that I'll show in a couple slides, along the lines of you should take action now to gain something. Um, and then the threat framing was situated in the American politics literature that suggests that people are very risk averse. <coughs> so we suggested if you don't take action now, you might risk losing something. And then finally we had a neutral or control treatment page that we could also compare. And then we were interested in adding this bandwagoning option, which I will also show in a couple slides, but basically it explained to people how many others are also taking action and how you should join the effort around this issue. And then to measure our outcomes, we had four potential out 
actions that people could take. They could share the article on Facebook, they could share it on Twitter, they could write their own personal message to the Senate Majority Leader, or they could sign a petition that Ms. Leno would then forward. <coughs> So this is an example of one of the pages that we randomly assigned people to. This is the control or neutral page. Um, so this is where something, you know, like this partnership couldn't have been possible with researchers sitting in the ivory tower and practitioners on the ground. This actually required traveling to Nairobi, um, meeting with Jessica, conducting focus groups around different issues that we thought might be viable options. Um, to show people online that would actually get them to take some sort of action. So here we decided that um, for the moment it would be an issue around spending in counties in Kenya. Um, and sadly, spending on development, that didn't actually happen as it was supposed to. But we thought that this might be a good call to action for people on Facebook. So this is what the neutral page looked like. And then this is what the added opportunity page had at the bottom. And then this line is the bandwagoning line. So a concrete number about how many other people have joined the effort, encouraging others to also join. So some initial results of the full scale experiment. So we ran this ad on Facebook for two weeks and then the ad was served to about 1.4 million Kenyans on Facebook. And of those people who saw the ad, about 24,000 actually clicked on it. Of those, it was about 18,000 unique clicks or visitors. And then the conversion rate was a bit smaller, about 4%. 653 unique visitors from Facebook actually took one of those, at least one of those four actions. But in the relative scheme of things, this isn't a bad conversion rate for Facebook ads. <laughs> so to answer that first question of what types of framings of information are actually more engaging and mobilizing, it looks as if it didn't have much of a difference. So, this is one of the nice things about randomized control experiments. We can actually get at that attribution question and that causation question. So in the question of does opportunity or threat lead to more action, the answer is no. Um, if you look at this control, opportunity, and threat bars, it's all about the same. But what's interesting to note is this control plus, opportunity plus, threat plus, actually does lead to more action compared to the relative threat or opportunity page. So this bandwagoning line, telling people what, how many other people are actually taking action and encouraging them to join the effort, um, did have an effect. So the second question we were interested in, in terms of what types of actions are people taking online, um, somewhat unsurprisingly, we see that most people want to share the article on Facebook. We recruited a sample um, from Facebook, so that's probably not surprising. But somewhat surprising is that the petition was second most popular. Um, and then the Senate one was <coughs> arguably the highest cost since people had to write their own personal message. Um, but still was not the last one, which is Twitter. Perhaps suggesting, as some conversations earlier have alluded to, that maybe there are different people on Facebook and Twitter in Kenya. Um, this is something that Jessica and I have talked about investigating potentially in further iterations of this experiment. And then the last question we had, um, does ICT <coughs> tools, do they lead to greater engagement of the disengaged? Um, so if we're looking here at men and women who are on Facebook in Kenya, the answer is no. So empirically we know that older men especially are the ones you know, leading the groundwork in, in the political arena in Kenya. And here we see that men overall are doing much more of the action taking than women. So of the people that actually clicked and saw any one of the six pages, a higher percentage of men are taking any action than women. And the way we did the Facebook advertising, we're able to disaggregate among men over 30 and men between 18 and 29 years old. And again, we see that it's the older men or the men over 30 who are doing most of the action. And somewhat disappointingly, <coughs> young women are the least likely to be taking any sort of action. <coughs> um, so in the future, we would like to build on these findings and do some more iterative experiments 
integrating political science theory into practice and design, and somewhat trying to see if we can get these disadvantaged and generally disengaged people to take more action. So one of the things we've been thinking about is that in the political science theories, um, they suggest that disengaged people generally care about one or two issues, and that it's the privileged and the already engaged who can sort of engage in politics in an abstract level and more generally. So maybe if we create a new A-B testing experiment around health and education issues, can we get women, and especially young women, engaged a little bit more? So I will now turn it over to Jessica to explain more from the Nzalendo side. Thank you, Leah. Um, Leah came to us at an opportunity, at a time which was very opportune for us because uh, we were, I had just become executive director and that meant that I needed to start shaping the strategy for the site. And in many ways, um, she, felt, she met my need and I, it was natural that we'd sit and discuss, was it early, early February or maybe? Yeah, it was, it was just before the beginning of the last um, house sitting. Our sitting start in February, mid-February, and end in December. And so that was very opportune, that it was just right. Uh, at least it, it built into my year, and I could factor in from the beginning. So she didn't even get a blanket, no. You know? <laughs> and of course, that she came with the media support was already a good thing. And so the opportunities, and you know, the opportunity presented um, possibilities for us in public participation. Uh, Kenya has a law that says the public have to participate in all levels of governance, both at the national and sub subnational level. And um, but the system is not in place yet within in, within government and how to engage. And so for sure, Parliament doesn't have a structure in place. Uh, so for us, this was an opportunity to experiment what's possible in this. Then, uh, at the time, Zalendo had about barely 800 users uh, at, um, on Facebook, yet we already had about 6,000 users on Twitter. And so it was an, idea of, well, an ideal time for us to try and grow our audience um, without having have to, spend, uh, to spend any, you know, for it. And then, it's also an opportunity to see how can we relate differently with the parliamentary secretariat and also the parliamentarians themselves in terms of building social capital, both for the individual MP or senator and the house seeing us as actually um, a support system for them, given that they are, the house is still battling between the presidential system, if you are borrowed from the American, uh, and, and the Westminster system we had before. So there's that tradition and a uh, push and shove between the system, within the system, as to people wanting to move ahead and say, hey, let's open up the space uh, for public in involvement, but there's, of course, you know, change comes gradually, yeah, as my society can attest to in, in UK. Um, then also uh, provided research expertise that we didn't have. Uh, for me, I'm, I'm more a practitioner, I'm not interested in doing too much uh, qualitative, quantitative stuff. So, she, she met my need in something I didn't have. Then practical challenges. So uh, her coming to Nairobi was very useful because when she came, of course, I had my guard up. Huh? What's she going to ask? And it's not in a bad way, but uh, a lot of times academia comes with already a set, a set template of what they want to done. And so she came and she asked me, what did I need? And, and I told her, I could explain to her how the parliament works and the things that were most at the heart of the people and the, the public discourse in the country, and that in itself um, meant that assumptions were corrected and were able to identify what issues we could take out to a focus <laughs> group and uh, so that we're able to figure out what we can focus on in the short term. Um, so to contextual reading and sharing was important. And then identifying a political issue with public interest and low level uh, risk for us was important because ultimately she can do something she was from America, and then the neck on the line would be mine and the founders. So uh, she would have to make sure that we are protected. I won't, I won't start getting strange phone calls. Already I know my phone is stuck, so uh, <laughs> making sure that I am on calls was very important. And then 
we shared also to be flexible to the ever-changing parliamentary calendar. That um, a lot of times they can say these are the issues that are going to be discussed, but because of the things that are happening in the local context, they keep changing. Like, uh, for example, last week there was a bill that was supposed to have been done first reading, but it's been pushed on the side because they decided they need to censure the speaker. So, uh, you know, you have to decide who is who is going to respond to that need and how fast. And so having being flexible was was useful uh, for this. And then the now with this regard to my to my society, uh, this is not just about this particular exercise, but just generally having a tech team which is located in a mature democracy. Sometimes they may not be very responsive to our needs because they don't realize that things in the democratic space in the country in transition are more fluid. And so they, that's something important for academia to note and also anybody wanting to support uh, or do tech work in that context, that they need to be uh, flexible uh, to, uh, so that they are able to make their partner responsive in the context. And then there was a delay in sharing the final research findings and that meant that we could not give them to this leader of Senate, uh, majority in the Senate, uh, as proposed. And then for us, we actually forgot to do a blog post around it, uh, just to showcase uh, what, what, the, what the findings, because the findings were, were interesting, uh, and it was useful to know that people had particular ideas on what they like done with the development money from their context. So the findings, what did that mean for us? Um, older man taking action versus the young. I think there was a They Work For You survey that was done a while back, which also sort of showed the same thing, that older men tend to be very vocal and so in, indirectly this validates other civic research in the space um, and then uh, in Kenya women are many times vote the way according to the instruction they get from the men in many ways so you find that whatever they say kind of carries the day and then the county development issue was far removed from the youth <coughs> as the older men see control the power, the means instruments of power and wealth in Kenya. Uh, they control the land, they control the tea, cash crops, uh, proceedings and things like that. Um, then the bandwagoning uh, frame was likely to get traction in our context because people, in as much as politics is expressed at the individual level, a lot of times people vote collectively, you know, so if my ethnic community wants me to do this coalition, even if I may disagree with them on a personal level, the likelihood that I will vote along that same line is very high. So this, this no wonder, that there's no surprise, that was not a surprise to us. Um, that Kenyans wanted more resources allocated development work at the county level was not in doubt. And then uh, for the future, information or the issue we pick has to be iterated at the level, at the personal level, you know, it needs to sting the individual so that they're able to take action online. Because um, financial figures it sound, you know, like uh, uh, like uh, pictures of pies in the sky, it really uh, won't get anyone to take action. So we need to bring them down to what does this mean to the cost of, let's say, the, the, the paying a teacher, a policeman, you know, because those are the basic, a lot of people are lowly paid. So if that's the people, the people are trying to influence at that level, we need to make sure the money yeah, does not feel like it's too far removed from their reality. Then unintended benefits were many. So in that sense, I, I am in love with Claire. <laughs> 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 uh, so we had a visibility of more than a million people, and that was great for us. Uh, we gained 12,000 members who have stayed with us since. They, we have had very little dropouts. Um, and then the research findings were useful to Zealand's strategic direction, uh, distilling the value of the value proposition we can give parliamentarians. Actually, right now we are exploring the possibility of growing that. There is actually an MP who's reached out to ask, uh, "Can we do this um, public participation around a bill together?" And the learnings I'm using, I'll be using essentially is what I learned from Leah's experience. Um, then the parliamentary secretariat com uh, commission is very open to us um, just talking and discussing how can public participation really be realized at the parliamentary level. Um, issue framing becomes critical. I, could never, I, was, I didn't know about it before, so her bringing it up uh, is now something I keep in mind in figuring out how do I attract attention of this particular group that has been unengaged before. 
Um, and then uh, they were from the user survey that they ran as part of this uh, exercise, we were able to gauge user interests and identify touch points that we can capitalize on. It was interesting that there's a lady who shared before about the experience of the, the interested um, bystanders in the US. And I say the same is true because uh, the information she, she was able to find was religion, family members, and friends are very influential in determining the political uh, results of, of people. So in that sense, um, we, can, we need to find ways of using that, those touch points to get action on the site and also offline. Yeah, thank you.